Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Afdalu salawati wa salama ala ashrafi al-anbiya Sayyidi Musaleen. Nabiyyina Habibina Shafi'ina Kurrata A'iyunina Muhammadin Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi Wa man tabi'ahu li ahsani la yumidin Brothers, move up inshallah if you don't mind Yani it's uh, I'd rather you we be close Because this is uh, what they call Halakat al-Zikr We're going to be talking about some verses of the Quran And some hadith So whenever we mention this here yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's angel Their wings will protect this gathering we hope, inshallah, because this is the month of Ramadan. You know, we, we look forward to Ramadan. This is the month, you know, that was the Shahr Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. The Quran was revealed in this month. The Quran, which is the word of Allah, was revealed in this month. This month ain't an ordinary month. This is a holy month. So, you know, this is also the month where Allah has tied up the shaitan. Shaitan can't do nothing. He's in chains. He's on, he's on a beat down. So Allah said, on this month, you ain't going to touch all my servants. I'm going to put you under control. You know I mean, so like, you know, the shaitan is trying to look to deceive people. But in this month, Allah sustahu abwaabu rahma. Allah has opened his doors of mercy for all of us. يعني. We just have to take this month, reflect, be serious. How can we let Allah's mercy come into our hearts? So this is really the topic I want to talk about today. And it's a massive topic. I really do apologize that I was late. The train got stuck at Farringdon. I couldn't do nothing. I was waiting there. Signal failure, as usual, with the tube. And I want to rush through. I had so much I want to talk about. Because when it comes to talk about the heart, the purification of the heart, there is so much. It's too big. No one can talk about all of it in one go. So I'm going to cram it into about 10, 15 minutes. I know we're all agitated, we're getting ready to eat. If uh, some of us have probably been working, helping out and stuff. So inshallah I'll keep it brief. But really we've got to be serious about this topic. The tezkiyah to nafs or the tasfiyah to qalb. You know, the, the, the purifying the heart. This is so important in Islam. It's so important. Yeah, we've got the, yeah, when we do our actions like pray, fast and stuff like that. People see us, like we're all sitting here. All of us are fasting, hopefully inshallah. And people who are watching us, they don't know what's inside our hearts, they don't know what's inside, they don't know what our intention is. They don't know what's internal to us. They might see us praying here, yeah, Allah Akbar, and then we do the sajda and all that stuff. They might see us go, go to the mosque, Ziyab al he goes to the Tarabin and all, all the time. Puts a hat on his head. You know what I mean? But what's inside? He might go there, ah, oh, so people can see me, look at me, man, but me to the mosque. We don't know what's inside. What's really he's thinking about. And that's what we have to purify. What's not only outside of us, but what's inside of us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says loads of places in the Quran. Allah in one place here, he swears by the nafs, by the soul. He says, what nafsu wa ma By the soul. And how we made it. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And we have inspired it. We have told the nafs, the person, the human being, what's good from what's bad. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Whoever purifies himself, or whoever purifies his heart, his soul, he succeeded. It means he's successful. Which means if you want to be successful in this dunya, if we all want to be successful here in this life, and in our afterlife, we have to purify our, our, ourselves. We have to. قَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا and the one who, who, who doesn't يعني, purify himself, he's finished. Allah says he's finished. He's in ruin. He's ruined himself. Why? Because outside he might have everything. He might wear the lumber jubba, you know what I mean? The white, white jubba, put a hat. But inside he's rotting away. Inside he's rot, rotting away. Now there's loads of stuff I want to talk about, right? But really I'm going to just cut it short. Our scholars, when they've talked about this issue in lots and lots of books, written hundreds of books about this issue. Some people call it ilm al-suluk. Some people call it tasawwuf. You might have heard the name Sufism. Yeah, in Bengali, Firaqi, they say. That's what it's all about. Purifying the inside of your nafs. Now, our scholars generally, they say, your heart, the heart can be of three categories. There's the heart that is muslih. That means the heart that is a good heart. It's healthy. There's the heart that is the sick heart. Al-marib is dying, is decaying. Like how a tooth, when it starts to rot, you see it break away. It's like that. 
Then there's another heart, which is dead. It's dead. We might see the person outside, he's nice and healthy, he might even do a 100 meter sprint, but inside his heart is dead. Now what do our scholars mean by that? What they mean yeah, is that when they mean by the healthy heart, they're talking about that heart which it loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It loves Allah. It loves the messenger of Allah. It loves everything that, that, they, that Allah and his messenger give and, and, they, and they said in the Quran, in the hadith. The hadith, all, all the stuff that Allah has said. And everything, you know, he stated, he did. The person, he loves that. And when he doesn't do namaz or when he misses a prayer, he, he, you know, he feels distressed, he gets hurt. Oh, why didn't I do that, man? I should have done tilawah tonight. It's the month of Ramadan. I want to get the best of it as I can, get the best reward as I can. He starts to feel hurt. He likes being around Muslims. He wants to learn about Islam. He yearns. He wants the akhirah. He doesn't want the dunya. He don't want the dunya. Because he knows what the, if he gets, uh, if he gets to crazy about the dunya, the dunya is going to take him away. It's going to take you away from the akhirah, which is the most important place for us. That's, in general, that's the, the, the healthy heart. And one can only do that if they start practicing the deen, live by the laws of Allah as much as they can, try and follow the example of, of the Prophet and his companions. What do they do? How they live? Which means he has to study them. He's got to sit with people, with teachers, who's going to teach him it. It means he's going to be around people who are going to show him these things. The second heart we said, the heart that's the ailing heart, is dying. Ain't dead yet, it's dying. And that heart is the one where it knows what it's supposed to do. But it's just ignore, it's, it's ignoring it. Yeah, I'll do it. I know I'm supposed to do all that, but he ignores it. I'm all right for now. I'll do it le- later. Yeah, 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 I, I believe in Allah, yeah? Yeah, I, I believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But, yeah, I'll wait, you know, not now. Yeah, I kind of agree with all of it, I kind of don't. So he's kind of halfway there. It means the sickness has gone into his heart, but it hasn't killed him yet. He's dying. He's like, can you see? That's like the ailing heart. Then there's the dead heart. Then there's the heart that is dead. That means this heart don't care about Allah. He don't care about the Prophet. He don't care about Islam. He don't care about anything good. He just wants to go on his way, do what he wants. And Allah says, what does he do? hawahu. He follows his own mind, his own desire. Whatever his desire tells him, he follows it. وَكَانَ أُمُورُهُ فُرْطَى And his affair is ruined. Allah says, كَانَ أُمُورُهُ فُرْطَى His affair, everything for him is ruined. Means, forget it, he's gone. In the akhirah, he's finished. In the dunya, he might follow whatever he wants to do, his own desires, follow whatever the hell he wants. In the akhirah, there can be no way out for him. That's the heart that's dead. That's the heart that doesn't know its Lord. Doesn't know who its prophet is. Brothers, we don't want to be, our, I don't want our hearts to be that kind of heart. Where outside we might look healthy, inside it's rotting away. It's rotting away. All because what? We ignore who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We don't study who Allah is. Who's Allah? Don't study who our prophet is. Who is our prophet? Who is he? Who is his companion? What's this religion about? Our parents were banging on about it when we were young. Yeah, the forest not in it. I'll go to do fara, read Arabic. We don't we ignore them. Because our parents they tried to make us aware of that. So what? One day we don't fall into that state where our hearts just rot. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's so important that Allah in Yawm al on the Day of Judgment, He doesn't want to look at anything else. He doesn't want to see anything else except one thing. And He says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفُعْ لَا يَنْفَعْ مَالٌ وَبَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Allah, on that day in Yawm al لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ The things you own, they ain't going to help you. 
لا ينفع مال ولا بنون and your children يعني and everyone else they're not going to be able to help you no one's going to be able to help you on that day what is going to help us on that day إلا except من أتى الله بقلب سليم except someone who comes with Allah with a pure heart a sound heart a healthy heart because Allah he ain't going to ask you about anything else if you said to, if Allah asked you on Yom al what would you do Allah you know I drove a BMW you know, I play games all night. He, don't look, he ain't looking for that. He wants to know, is your heart pure? Is what's inside here, is it pure? Did you do everything for me? Allah's gonna, he's he's going to want to ask. Did you do it out of love for me? Did you do it out of love for my Prophet? Did you do it out of love for my religion? So the qalbun salim, the sound heart is what Allah's looking for. And it's a struggle. It's hard. It ain't easy. This is why some scholars call it a kind of jihad. They call it a kind of struggle. Because it's hard every day to fight off what's out there. It's hard. And to try and make sure what's inside is clean and pure. All that takes effort. So those are the general three categories of heart our scholars talk about. So there's the sound heart, the qalbun salim. There's the dying heart. The decaying heart is ill, and that illness is starting to take over it, but he, he doesn't realize. And then there's the dead heart. That dead heart, he ain't got any hope except if Allah he gives him the mercy. Brother, there are so many, there's a lot of things I wanted to talk about regarding how to go about purifying the nafs, how our scholars uh, uh, showed us ways to actually do it, but we haven't, haven't got the time. But there's three things I want to talk about that the scholars mention, amongst lots of things that poison the heart turn it black, poison it one of them is one of them is the tongue what we always speak what we say and we might think, yeah, it's easy to open the mouth it's easy to open the mouth and it's easy to close it and it's easy, easy to speak words, it's easy but what do our words, the consequences it has, the effects it has? The scholars say excessive talking is bad, bad for the heart. It poisons the heart. How is that? How does it, talking all the time kill the heart? Well, they say, if you think about it, with this tongue, we can gossip. We can gossip about one another. When a when brother is sitting here, yeah, all right, mate, yeah, yeah. When he's gone, wow, that brother, man. You know what he did the other day? You know what I saw him do? I was hiding behind a tree here and I was seeing him. And you know what I saw? Stuck, stuck, stuck gossiping. Oh, you know when I went to his house here? Yeah? Oh, his family are like this. Oh, they didn't even feed me like that. Stuck, backbiting. It's easy. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he was in front of his companion one time, he said he was telling him, Can I, shall I tell you about one thing that will destroy you? And they said, What? Messenger of Allah, what is it? And he held his tongue. He said, this. He's referring to his tongue. He held his tongue in his two fingers and he says, this. It's a sahih hadith. He said, this it will destroy you. It will lead you into trouble. There's another narration which is Hassan. The hadith is Hassan, which is a good hadith. That Umar, the second khalif, radiallahu an, he went to see Abu Bakr and he saw Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, pulling, pulling his tongue with his two fingers. And Umar said, Wallahi Abu Bakr, what are you doing? Allah forgive you, what are you doing? He says, Ya Umar, you don't know. This tongue can lead me into trouble. It can lead me into places. It's not a good thing. It can lead me down a way which is destructive. So even the Sahabi is trying to teach us. The Prophet is trying to teach us that this tongue, we can protect it. We can protect a lot of things. We can prevent a lot of bad. Because with his tongue we can swear. Allah doesn't like swearing. It's not a good character to swear. We can, make, we can joke about someone that might border on offending them. That's not good. With his tongue we might speak lies. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything we do. He knows everything we do. So this tongue, if you protect it, the Prophet said, 
He will guarantee you paradise. And another thing that we need to, uh, uh, another thing that poisons the heart, yeah? And another uh, uh, evil that poisons the heart is, oh, you said it, all right. You live, don't worry. That's it's, cool. just, it's just the cooker. Set off the oh, fire. Yeah. I didn't want to, uh, don't worry. The other thing that poisons the heart, yeah, is your nether, your gaze, what the eyes do, wherever you look. Just as easy as it is to speak something, it's easy to look like that. Not only that, staring. Staring at things that are haram, we're not allowed to stare at, we're not allowed to look at. And Allah tells the believers, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Tell the believers, يَغُدُّ أَبْصَارَهُمْ To lower their gaze. Why? Allah says, ذَلِكَ أَذْكَى لَهُمْ That is, that will make you purer people. Because the Prophet said, glance, glancing at something that is haram, is like the arrow of shaitan. When you look at something haram, when we look at something haram, we're not supposed to look at, shaitan jumps into that glance and he makes it look nice. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. Look at this. It makes it seductive. So it affects your heart. Ah, you see it. Hits you like an arrow. You might feel good when you see it first there, but that's shaitan. Shooting an arrow. And really, what the arrow is doing is puncturing our heart. It's puncturing our heart. So even how many, you know, how many sort of, you know, Allah, Allah only knows how, how many times our eyes fall and stuff is not supposed to see because this is not a Muslim society. This is not Muslim society. People do what the hell they want, and it affects our sight. Because, you know, we can't always look down, walk into a lamppost, do you know what I mean? We can't, can't always do that. That's why it struggles hard. We've got to control our gaze. So if we, if we protect our tongue from speaking bad, from speaking bad, from saying bad, protect our eyes from seeing bad, that's two avenues, two roads we block into our heart. We should use these eyes to look at and read the Qur'an, to do tilawah of the Qur'an. We should use his eyes to watch programs that are going to be beneficial for us. Use his eyes to analyse what's going on around us. So we can understand things better. The third thing, there are lots of things that poison the heart. There are lots and lots of things. The books go on for ages. The third thing that poison our hearts, brothers, is the people we keep company with. Anyone who's serious about studying Islam, serious about studying this discipline, this subject area of purifying the heart, you will see the books devote so much page, so many pages to whose company we keep. Who are we hanging out with? There are people who if we hang out with, we know they're, they're good people. We know they're the people we're supposed to hang out with. Because these people, they remind us of Allah. They remind us of the Prophet. They remind us that, oh bro, you know what, you should be, should be doing that. They always give us good advice. Advice to talk. So, MashaAllah, all of you have come. Which means all of you wanted good. May Allah reward you for that. So there are people who always want to make you do good. Well, you shouldn't do that. Remember what Allah's Messenger said. They always advise you constantly. They keep you in track. Because it's easy to fall out of track, isn't it? But these brothers, these people, if you sit with them, ulama, people who are knowledgeable, shaykh, people who study Islam, people who can tell you about the akhirah, people can, who can tell you about what you're supposed to do in the dunya to prepare you for the akhirah. That way they protect your heart, they safeguard it. But there are other category of people who, if you hang out with them, all they're thinking about, all they're thinking about is dunya. All they're thinking about is where they want to drive their car, what they want to do tonight. Even in the holy months, they want to tell you, when you tell them about Islam, they're like, forget that man, life is easy, enjoy it, hang out with me, you know, we chill out. They might even roll up a zoo, who knows? They might even do even more. 
Yeah, I know. It's funny, yeah, but people like that, and I bet you we all know people who are like, like that. They don't care about Islam. They don't care about the Akhirah. They don't care about being with good people. They don't care about being with ulama. They don't care about being with mashayikh. They don't care about people who have purified their hearts. They don't want to be around these people. They don't want to be around people who are calling for Islam. Calling people to Islam. They don't want to be around these people. Rather, they want to take other Muslims and take him to, to, to a role which is destructive. Bro, we've all seen it with our eyes. We've all seen it. I don't know. We've, all, we've all seen it with our eyes. Whitechapel, everyone knows. I say the same thing. I'm from Camden. King's Cross is the same thing. We see it with our own eyes. One day they're having fun, next day even they're in jail, they're lying in a gutter with syringes in them. They think, you know, they had the good, good life and they tell people, yeah, come to it, hang out with me, and we'll chill out. Then there are a third kind of people, a third kind of people who are the Muslim, يعني. the Muslim, but they want to change Islam. They don't like Islam the way Islam has come. They don't like it. Oh, oh, Islam, what are you talking about Islam, Sharia? Nah, man, don't, not about Sharia anymore. Islam is your private ibadah, private worship. Forget about ahkam, forget about the laws of Allah, who cares about that? There are people, other people who do bid'ah. They make new things up in the religion, and they tell us it's part of our religion. So these are Muslims that are telling Muslims about wrong beliefs. They're trying to change Islam. This is the third category of people that are dangerous. They're trying to change Islam. They're trying to change Islam to fit the situation. Oh, Islam, it's hard, isn't it, Islam? So, you know what? We don't really need half of religion anymore. The Prophet he brought it. He did the hard work. It's done. You, you don't have to do that anymore. You live in this country. It's nice. You do your namaz. That's it, khalas. Forget about the other, other aspects of Islam. Forget about Islamic morals. Forget about Islamic behavior. Forget about any kind of Islamic dress. Forget about any kind of Islamic look. He said, oh, don't worry about these things. You know, they're not, not really part of Islam. They try and tell you like that. They try and take you away from the religion. And they're Muslims. Oh, you don't have to believe in, 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 in the Quran anymore. You know, yeah, believe in it, but not all of it, you know. You don't have to believe in all of it. All of it don't apply to you. Now people are trying to change that. They're trying to change that. But I guess, you know, inshallah, there's much more that I want to talk about. But I think we could wrap it up there. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بارك الله فيك uh, obviously, we have a uh, little time left before it starts. So if any brothers have any questions or comments to make, uh, this is the opportunity to ask the brother, inshallah. I hope that inshallah, tawadal, and salam. Yeah, it's just, like, that's an important point. I know it's a good feeling in Ramadan. We're all like spiritually charged. We are, and we should be. It's a holy month. Allah has blessed this month for 30 days. He's giving us his rahmah for 30 days. Continuously. He's saying, you know, my mercy is there for you. If you want forgiveness, you can get forgiven. Whatever you want. Sincerely, if you ask it, Allah will give it. Allah, he will give it. But the problem is now, Allah doesn't just want that one month commitment from us. He don't just want 30 days from us anymore. He wants us our whole lives to serve him. So he wants this month, I suppose one way you can look at it is, look, take this month as an opportunity. Allah has allowed us to live for this 
uh, to, to see this Ramadan, take this opportunity, all of us should take this opportunity and say, you know what, let me make this the new beginning, the springboard from where I become serious about my religion, I become serious about Allah, I become serious about my heart, not falling in the category of a sick heart or a dead heart. This is the month where Allah He can wipe our sins clean and say, you know what, you got a new beginning. But you better worship me after for 30 days as well. 12 months a year. It's on that condition. You can't do it on when we feel like it. Because that's not up to us. Allah, Allah didn't say worship me when you feel like it. He didn't say that. He said you have to worship me every time you can. Obviously in the five prayers, zikr as well, you do tasbih. You remember Allah a lot. So we have to use this month. Not just to worship Allah in this month only, for these 30 days. Even though these are the ho- are very holy days, yeah? We've got to do it after as well. Because then we're not being sincere. Then we're going to be like those people whose heart is sick. They just do whatever, they, they worship Allah whenever they want, when it suits them. That's not the kind of Muslim we want to be. We want to yearn for Allah. We want to build our knowledge of Allah and His Messenger. So we can go out, and we can help other people with this message. It's not just for Ramadan Although Ramadan is a beautiful time To start doing all this It's what a beautiful month This is the chance where you've got a boost And Allah saying look I've, I've closed the, the doors of hell I've tied up the shaitan I've opened my doors of mercy This is the ideal month This is the month now to make the commitment Either we make the commitment Inshallah with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We will be on that path Hopefully where our hearts will be purified of the teachings of Islam. Or, we're going to stay and we're just going to rock how we are. So when Ramadan finishes, our hearts finish as well. We get on that road again where our hearts will turn black. And we're going to keep going down that road until it gets black and black and black until it's dead. Then we're going to fall into one of that category where the hearts are dead. They won't know Allah. They won't know that Allah's messenger. They won't know about Islam. And Allah only knows what, you know, what's going to happen in the akhirah with a person with that kind of heart. And we pray to Allah we don't fall in that category. But this is the month to make the change for all of us. So important. This is the ideal month. There can't be any other better month than to start in this month. We've got a whole 30 days of training as well. Inshallah. Allah give us the tawfiq that we can continue even outside Ramadan to worship him as he's supposed to be worshipped. Alright. Jazakallah for continuing unfazed from the fire alarm and everything else. And um, Ashok, the food ain't burned, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no. We, I think we learned a lesson that fire alarms and cookers don't mix. Yeah. So, inshallah, we've got, I think, about four or five minutes until uh, uh, it's dark. Um, how long left? How many minutes? Uh, really? Like minutes left. So, inshallah, um, we can wrap it up, I guess. Uh, or anyone, anyone want any questions or comments anyone wants to make, you can be also welcome to do so. Uh, you can raise your hand now up, or I'll get staff to just round, uh, round it up, inshallah. Okay, we'll round it up. Alright, Allah, brothers, thanks again for coming. Allah, Allah always intends good for people who come to, to, a, to a gathering that, where the talk is about Him and His Prophet and about His religion. Inshallah, we know we pray that the angels' wings are still over us, still over this circle, protecting us from all the evil that's out there, and the evil that's in our hearts. And the, the summary of the talk really is this, brothers, just as we have to learn. Uh, knowledge, whether Islamic knowledge or uh, other knowledge within school, we also have to have the knowledge to purify our hearts. It is so important in Islam that the inner aspect, all the inside inner aspect, like our intention, uh, uh, you know, the good behavior we do, how we're really feeling inside, this has to be in line with the Sharia, just as everything else. We can't neglect that, brothers. That is so important. And that is a struggle. That is going to take constant effort. It's not easy. 
And Allah, Allah is saying it's not easy, but the reward is high. The reward is high. And Allah rewards a lot. He's a Rahman Rahim. He always rewards us more than we, we deserve. And in this month, as I was saying, this is a month to multiply the scores. Get top score. This is a month to, to do it, to start it. And as I was saying earlier, may Allah give us the tawfiq to use this month as a month to really become serious about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To someone who, you know, who loves Allah, to loves his prophet, wants to learn about this deen, become people with good character, who respect and love their parents, their neighbours, Muslim and non-Muslim. It don't matter if they're, if they're non-Muslim. It's our communities out there, we've got to help them. We see what kind of stakes they're in. That requires we have good character. Be moral people. Show the example. Inshallah ta'ala, we will wrap it up there and then we can get prepared for iftar. Yeah.